My guest tonight is, simply put, the host of the best studio pre- and post-game show in North America. In English, anyway. I can't speak to the other languages. It's Hockey Night in Canada. We'll explain how and when you can see it here in the U.S. But first, not in Canada, but right here is George Strombolopoulos. Welcome. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, sir. Real pleasure. How are things? Uh, really good. And now, I've been wanting to ask you about the show and you and, and hockey, and, and you happen to be here. How convenient. Ten blocks from an arena. It was perfect. Perfect timing. Canadian Canadians, Rangers, exactly. I had to come. Let's get the basics out of the way first. You're on not just before, during, and after from 6.30 to 1.30 every Saturday. But if a guy is watching hockey in Canada on Saturday night, no matter what channel he puts on, mm -hmm. he's going to see you at some point. It's yeah. like Lex Luthor in Superman who <laughs> takes over all the channels. This is, explain, I mean, there's nothing like this in U.S. sports history, let alone today. So, yeah, Hockey Night in Canada used to just run one early game and one late game, mm -hmm. and now we do all the games. So whenever an intermission starts, there we are. And then... When the next intermission starts, there we are. And we just keep going and going and going and going. Somewhere by 9 p.m., we're already dusted. Yeah. And we only have to go another four and a half, five hours after that. But, yeah, we do every game uh, in Canada. You can watch them down here as well. It's, it's quite an experience. So I, I have tried this, not on the scale that you're doing. I did, I did a, a, a football show with two co-hosts and two analysts. Mm -hmm. And that was like shoveling smoke. And I did a baseball show with two games and one analyst who com never stopped complaining all day. And that was enough to take. That took 10 years off my life easily. <laughs> you have, by my count, three primary analysts, two of whom are complete goofballs, four others who are in and out, and reporters, guests. Do you have experience taming lions? Is L that what Luckily enough, I have yes. led a tiger to water, so I experienced that. Yeah. yeah, it's. I think the nice part is that we all started this together, the new version of Hockey Night, so we all recognize our job was to make everybody better and that that's made it okay there are days though where i'm just i'm mm -hmm. trying to get in <laughs> and i got, go to break and i'm trying to get in and, and you can't really do it but then you just kind of let it roll because they want something out of you too and on the other hand you're also the crossing guard for everybody else yeah which is the which is the thing it's like yeah by the way while you're doing all this basic manual labor of putting the kids in the right classroom say something intelligent right and and so you during the when you, I don't know, when you do those sports you're in the periods watching the games, we've got all these TVs at right. once. We watch as many as we can. Then suddenly, oh no, there was a goal in this. Yeah. Go talk about the Ottawa Islanders game that you didn't see. That we didn't see nothing. Right. Like, oh my God, what happens? So we got our laptops going. We're trying to keep keep up the speed. It's it's the most wild television experience I've ever had in my life. Just trying to keep up to speed, but it's it's wildly rewarding because you know it's like guess. these. When it's over, you're like, well, that was it. Yeah. We fooled him again. That's it. <laughs> Got away with it for another week. You, you mentioned it's the first year doing it, but this is a franchise that predates television. There were still New York Americans and Montreal Maroons when this started. Sure. Neil Young's father used to host the show. Did, I mean, right. that's, that's, this is Foster Hewitt. This is all the Hewitts. You have the weight of decades on here, and yet there is this offhand sort of convivial quality to the show, and I don't, I'm trying to figure out how you do that. We knew, and I knew the moment that I was going to step into the chair that Ron McLean had after 29, 30 years, that no matter what I did, I was going to get smoked for it. I knew that. So <laughs> Why not then? So why not right. not worry about it right. if death is inevitable? So right. I just sit there, and uh, I, I, the truth is I just enjoy it, and I kind of forget that I'm on television, and my entire career, 20-odd years, have been about, I don't really care what happens out there. I love this game so much, and mm -hmm. I love television and radio so much, and I like the idea of connecting to strangers and just be good company. And Saturday night, be good company for people who had a day that maybe wasn't as lucky as yours. Mm -hmm. And that's all I try to do. So you just also the trick is turn Twitter off. Yes. Don't even go there yes, because please. if you're a human being, at some point you'll look at it and you'll lose faith in humanity. So you put it away and you just have a good time mm -hmm. and you start, try to stay as present as possible. That's why I think we're so loose. Yeah. I, you know, and Nick and I get along really well. Elliot Friedman and Damian Cox and I who are on the show with us. We worked together 20 years ago wow. when I was 21 years old starting in sports radio. So we all know each other, the producer, Brian Spears, 21 years ago. We mm -hmm. all worked together. So we still feel like it's us. So we don't, it's easy to shut out the outside world. All right. I want to go through uh, later on after the break uh, some of the background, is the, the very background of your career. But let's talk, a couple of big, big hockey things, meta hockey things. We'll get one in before the break. Uh, you spent a lot of time in the States. So you have a good viewpoint of what it's like here as opposed to Canada. It's not, never going to be like it is in Canada, but why is it, why is it not progressed? Why, what is wrong with hockey in the United States? I think a big part of it is television. And, and it's only been the last three or four years where you could get every playoff game on television here. True. And hockey 
is all about the playoffs. That, that run to the Stanley Cup, there's no sport mm -hmm. that has a better run, a tougher trophy to win. Americans haven't been able to see it right. for so many years. So you're just starting to see some television access now. I think that's a big part of it. I think fighting alienated a bunch of people early on in the 70s when hockey was really entrenched in Canada. Mm -hmm. If you watched television in the States and you sat down with your family and all of a sudden it was just, oh, it's bloody. Was there a car right. crash? No, it's a sporting event. That threw some people off as well. But I really think it's the TV angle. You need television. It's what you were saying before about the role of a broadcaster right. in a sport. You don't need the athlete to talk. You need the game to be good. Yep. The playoffs are everything. So without that, I think it's been, you know, smaller. The Northeast does it quite well. Rangers mm -hmm. fans are super passionate. Thank Bruins you. fans are as wild and irrational as any Montreal or Toronto fan. Bastards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And worse on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So I think you have those pockets. You're also starting to see really interesting things happen now where next year, quite possibly, the first overall draft pick will be a guy that was born in Arizona who grew up a Coyotes fan. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of Southern California players yes. now who are in the league. That's because you need players who were born in non-traditional hockey markets mm -hmm. to take up sports is tribal and hockey is particularly tribal. I think that's why. So maybe in 20 years, it's a different conversation. Yeah, we had the, but fortunately we had a conversation like this 20 years ago, or at least <laughs> I did. Uh, I, I've got a solution to the All-Star game I want to pitch to you, but we're going to take a break. Okay. More with uh, George Strombolopoulos of Hockey Night in Canada uh, in the U.S. Uh, if you have the NHL Network, and we'll explain that next.